Howdy, y'all. So I decided to do something a little unorthodox, and I'm going to start a gaming playlist on my channel for Democracy 3. And the idea is I'm going to be playing as Andrew Yang. So all the policies that I enact in this game are going to be directly from his website, whether it be the Freedom Dividend or the, uh, you know, the public option healthcare system, things of that nature. And we're going to see how that works. If I get reelected, that's awesome. If I fail, well, it's going to be a really short series, but hopefully I don't. And hopefully I can give you guys a pretty long playlist of videos. So the basic concept of this game is that you start off with a country. Uh, I have a couple extra countries because I've downloaded a bunch of mods, but I'm going to be playing as the U.S. this time, obviously. Now, if you notice here, it actually gives you a bunch of random information. Some of it's uh, relevant, GDP, poverty level, that kind of stuff. Uh, but the Big Mac Index, that's a very, very valuable measurement, if you didn't know. So we're going to get started here. I'm going to name this party. I'm going to name it the Freedom Dividend Party. And we're going to be going up against his arch nemesis, the robots. Uh, let's do five term limits just so it's a longer game. You can also do none and basically just play for as long as you want. But I'm going to do five. That, that takes a long time to get up to five terms anyway. Uh, let's leave hurricane, earthquakes, all that the same. The difficulty is fine. Uh, I'm going to put this down a little bit, but it's only because the game leans very heavily towards uh, socialist policies. You'll see that when we get in there. I, I don't know why. It's just the creator of the game, I guess. But uh, So I'm going to do this maybe to 75. That way they don't get all mad at me just because I don't like socialism. Uh, everything else is fine. We can get started. So I'll show you the you know, the basic concept of the game. <clears throat> Here, there's, there's one main menu where you'll be doing 90% of your, your, your gameplay. Great, so we won the first election, as you'd expect. Now, this is not a good sign. <laughs> I don't think I've ever started a gameplay on this game where unemployment and crime are this bad. <laughs> but, you know, you know, we'll fix it. We're Andrew Yang, so we'll come up with a solution. At least health and everything is good. Wow, that is a lot of red. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever seen it this bad starting off, but it'll be a challenge. It'll be fun. So <clears throat> right here in the middle, you'll see all the different types of the population. So your groups, uh, you'll see that about 40%, this dark gray bar uh, that's behind the white bar, that's actually like the percentage of people that are socialist. So that's about 40, 45% of the population uh, sees themselves as socialist. You'd also see that, so a little, well, ironically, so a little bit over 50% see themselves as capitalist, but they also see themselves as socialist. So uh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> uh, you'll also see that everything affects everything else. So if I go to uh, international aid, um, yeah, foreign aid, You'll see that it positively affects socialists, liberals, uh, ethnic minorities, but it negatively in, impacts patriots. And then you also see that it, it positively impacts foreign relations. And now these dark blue ones are the, the main policies. And then the ones that aren't dark blue, the white ones, are the ones that you can change. So if I were to up foreign aid, you can see here that foreign relations goes way, way up. And patriots of the country of the United States really hate me. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, the main thing I'm going to start off with is I'm going to go to this tab right here, which are your, <clears throat> your cabinet members. You can see that you have uh, seven different cabinet members, and these little numbers right here next to the fist represent political capital. And the more political capital you have, the more policy things you can enact each turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reshuffle the cabinet, which cost me 10 capital up front, but it is definitely worth it, and I'll explain why. So now I'm going to start off hiring a foreign policy person. So I'm going to be focusing on making liberals happy and capitalists happy, because I feel like that's mainly where Andrew Yang has his, his base, is with liberals. He also has it with like libertarians and conservatives as well, but mainly with liberals and with capitalists, because that's kind of who he is as a person. 
So I'm going to focus heavily on hiring people who have loyalty towards liberals or capitalists. For instance, I'm looking for foreign policy. So this person is capitalist and religious. That's a pretty good one, but let's see if we can find a better one. I'll also be doing a lot of things pro-environmental, so this would be a good option as well. But let's see if we can't find a foreign policy person who's even better. So liberal and capitalist, this person is perfect. So I'm going to hire that person for foreign policy. You'll see almost five political capital. That's the highest you can get. So the more that you do policies, you enact policies that benefit these people, the more they like you. And the more they like you, the higher the political capital, with a five being the max. So the next is going to be welfare. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do this and then kind of edit it so that you guys don't have to sit here and wait for me to do each one. So I'll see you guys after I'm done with this. Okay, so I'm done picking my cabinet members. As you can see, I got a lot of people with really high political capital. So each turn, I'm going to be making this some amount of political capital to spend on other policies. So that was the main thing I was going to do this turn, but I still have 14 political capital left over. And so one thing about this game you'll notice is that they go really heavily into crime. So almost every time you start a game, your crime is really high and you have to deal with that. So, um, but I need to make sure that I'm making liberals happy. And right now liberals just are not happy with anything. Uh, so the best thing I can do starting off and it will, and it will definitely make liberals unhappy, but I pretty much have to do it. Uh, where's community policing? You know what? I'm going to enact something if I can this turn. Community policing. Can I do it? No. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Yeah, so this thing is great because it lowers crime a lot and antisocial behavior like drinking. It costs a little bit, but not that much. And it increases your liberal, uh, your liberal happiness as well as your liberal membership. And that's what this little, the people symbol here is your actual membership goes up. So the amount of people in our country who are liberal will go up. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm just gonna save the rest uh, for next turn because it carries over. Every time you go to a next turn on this game, you get a, an in-between screen, which you're about to see, which basically shows you, oh great, that's actually good because our GDP goes up. So that's good and capitalists are happy. Uh, shows you your budget report as well as the amount of people who are likely to vote for you right now only two percent That's not good. We need to change that um, This shows you that people don't like you and might try to assassinate you which is a big issue this game um, In this game, it's very easy to get assassinated. So we need to be careful of that So I'm going to continue to focus on crime before I, you know, do the freedom dividend and stuff like that because it's really important to get this down. So I'm going to increase spending on prisons a lot, which actually makes liberals happy, surprisingly. I don't really know why. Uh, and then also, since I have a lot more pol political capital, what I'm going to do... is maybe increase healthcare spending. Oh yeah, definitely. So another one of Andrew Yang's policies is the public option. So this is actually something that would definitely, you could definitely see as a Yang type policy. So I'm gonna drastically increase public healthcare spending here, which lowers unemployment, uh, increases health, does make socialists happy, which, you know, whatever, uh, and makes capitalists unhappy, but we'll fix that. We'll enact some policies that'll make them happy. And then I'm also going to do, oh man, I don't have enough for that right now. I'm going to do waste collection as well, because the environment's another big thing in this game. Uh, that's actually all I have time for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed my first video in this series. If you have any questions about Democracy 3 or any of the type of concepts of how the game works, feel free to ask down in the comments. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.